Here's another electric car. This is the Jaguar I-Pace, which is very luxurious. I'm very surprised. It's more like a wine bar than it is a car. And that could be a good thing because electric cars are not cheap. You want as much car as you can get for your monthly payment. So let's find out if this is worth it. Along with tackling some of the most frequently asked questions about the iPace for people like me, basically, who are still a little confused about the whole EV thing. Simple questions like how long does the battery really last? How charging at home works? And what is the correct pronunciation of the word Jaguar? But first, power. There are three ways to charge it. You've got slow, fast and rapid. Slow is obviously from your home. That will take 45 hours from a normal plug. Then you've got fast charge, which is a 7 kilowatt home box, which looks like this, or an out and about box, which can be varying in kilowatts. This is a 7 kilowatt, and that will charge this from 0 to 80% in 10 hours. Rapid charging is one of these. This is a 50 kilowatt charger, which will give this car 168 miles in an hour of charge. There's also some 100 kilowatt chargers around, which is even faster, particularly at BP. If you live in the UK, there's more of those coming up all the time, and that's going to be very exciting. That's not to say you have to know everything about kilowatt hours and kilowatts just at this moment in time. It is a little bit overwhelming for some people, particularly for me at first. All you need to know is the lower the kilowatts, the slower it charges. And I get a guarantee when you've got one of these, you will be telling everyone about kilowatt hours in the pub and oh, I got to this charger the other day. And also you don't actually have to sit here for 10 hours while it charges. The idea is you're always going to have some charge. And these are just to give you a little bit of extra top up. That's it. That, for example, is going to be a Lidl over there. So you could put it on charge or is it a Lidl? Is it little? Well, I don't really know. I don't go there, mate. Waitrose. Regardless of where you decide to buy your biscuits, one thing we all do is go to a home. And that brings us on to our next real world FAQ. Will an iPace fit in the garage? Possibly no. This is 4.68 metres long. So in theory, it should go in a British garage. But that is in theory. You're probably going to need a driveway or an American sized garage. That's why I'm going to be in the middle here. And whilst you look for a bigger house because you know you deserve it, time for our public information bit we call Fast Facts. Firstly, abbreviations. This stands for Software Over the Air. The Jaguar has that. This stands for State of Charge. And here is the correct pronunciation of the word Jaguar. Jag-U-R. Easy, isn't it? Now you try. This is a 2012 Jaguar. No! Last year, Jaguar. No! Jaguar. No! God, please, no! Jaguar four-string bass. No! Next, it's on to the prices and the running costs. But before that, does it drive like a traditional Jaguar? Well, the answer to that is no. The steering is much firmer, for example, than you might expect. The same applies to the suspension. Overall, though, this is a completely new experience that will make you feel all modern and relevant. More on that in a moment after we've talked about range. Many iPace owners now are going to jump in and talk about their range and put it in the comments. The official, it, I, I'd say that, the official is 291 miles. That will change depending on what you're doing and where you're going. There's a very good tool on the Jaguar website actually which you put in the various parameters, oh it's cold or I'm driving on a motorway and it shows you how that affects the range and it is really significant. For example, 291 miles on this suddenly becomes 166 miles on the motorway. Then in a hot country or in the summer, that 291 can go up to 300. Excusing the footage from my modern iPhone 1, this is what 100% battery looked like on my iPace. A typical journey I take is 41.5 miles using 90% motorway. And at the end of that journey, my state of charge looked like this. Two days earlier, as you can see here, the iPace offered 13 more miles and less than the official number, of course. Again, an illustration on how it all varies. Boot space is good, 1,453 litres here, which is more, obviously, than a Model 3, but less than an e-tron and a lot less than a Model X, which has a 1,000 litres more. And if we're talking about numbers, let's now delve into some of the running costs.
Because, Liz, this is over £40,000, your VED is going to be £450 a year. Insurance is something like four fifty four, so about the same for someone like me. Servicing, well, in some parts of Europe it's free, or in the UK you can get a service pack for about £1,000, or pay-as-you-go two fifty or £300 per service, and it's every 21,000 miles. With other costs and MPG equivalents on the way, I wanted to cover noise, because EVs are not always quieter than ICE cars. In some EVs, and in some cases, you can actually be aware of more noise, and it's something I imagine to be one of the biggest new challenges for EV makers. This is a loud bit of road. You won't be able to hear the electric noises that the car makes. They're very subtle. I was going to show you how they are. There's a little sort of word noise that you get like you get in any EV. In terms of noise on the road, well actually not bad at all. The decibel is 55 at 60 miles an hour on a noisy bit of road. To give you a comparison, that's a little bit louder or about the same as the quietest car we've done which is the Volkswagen Touareg on the very small wheels, diesel, very quiet car that. Right, let's have a look at some prices and as you can see here I have chosen the iPACE business lease just to give you an example of a deposit and a monthly price. But of course if you're not a business you just choose the other option. Leasing works for everyone. You could say it's a new thing. Compared to some EVs the iPACE does sit a little lower down in terms of the miles to the gallon equivalent. Some people are getting 70 to 90. I spoke to one guy who was getting 97 miles to the gallon. I think he was in the US and it is a different parameter there because the gallon in the US is different to the gallon in the UK. But here are a couple of websites with calculators on them. First one is hypermiler.co.uk, handy calculator on there where you can enter all your information to find out your MPGE. There's also an interesting one on ZapMap, as I have done a comparison here between this and the excellent Lexus UX. You can see the difference there. Most of you will be charging at home, so here's how it works. Decide where you want the charge point to be, remembering the government cover for a cable run of up to 15 metres from your main fuse box. Any more, you'll pay £5 a metre thereafter. Normally, when you order, you'll need to take pictures and send them to your supplier. In this case, I'm using BP Charge Master as an example, no promo. With that in mind, and average prices of all suppliers, how much will one set you back? So you can get a three kilowatt box for about £279, including your government grant. I don't know why you'd want a three kilowatt box, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's just too slow. You want a seven kilowatt box, and they start from £500, including your grant. OK, on now to some basics. It's got a 0 to 60 of about four seconds-ish, 400 horsepower two motors, one front, one rear, and also it is four-wheel drive. Plus, it can actually wade through up to 500 millimetres of water, which is five times more than a normal car, and very useful, particularly if you're in the UK and you use the M23, which was closed the other week due to flooding. Complete carnage everywhere. Do you know what I think they should do? If you've got a car that can wade, they should just let you through. I can wade 500 millimetres. Go and get your tape measure, mate. Final question, and the most obvious one. Is it any good? Let's face it, they've taken a huge risk here, and some people would say their entire survival as a brand relies on this car. At a time where it seems all the eyes are on Tesla, is there any point in anyone even bothering to bring anything else to the table? Well, for Jaguar, the answer is very much yes. <laughs>